Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the It's For Nerds podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Robinson. Joining me once again is... That ginger kid on the internet. Hey, you going, brother? Yeah, pretty alright. Pretty alright? Pretty all right. We're back for our second episode in two weeks. Yeah, well... We're on a roll. On a, it's two or one? One and a half, didn't we? One and a half, yeah. We're, we're it's regular. better than usual. Yeah. We're semi-regular. And we're recording in video this time. We've got the podcast and we've got fancy lights and shit. And yeah, we've got some production and value or something. We've got a budget. Yeah, we've got a budget. Yeah. We're going to have like uh, ads on TV and stuff. And yeah. I don't know. What are we going to have? Actors. Um, Hammering cream. Fart jokes. Fart jokes. <laughs> Where do you buy fart jokes from? <laughs> um, local farts. <laughs> <laughs> Max Comics and Collectibles. Yeah. Go to Max Comics and Collectibles. Support your locals. Yep. To buy fart jokes. So today we're going to do the same thing we always do. What we've bought, we'll pick that, what we've watched, what we've played, everything and else. Stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, we'll do pickups first, because that might take the longest, and especially in my shit. And then, Not for me, though. No, but you've got something pretty cool. Yeah. And then we'll get into whatever we've been watching and playing. So I just got back from New York. I went over there, I was over there like four days, and I really only had one day to go shopping and shit. I was in Staten Island, mostly, um, and while I was there, I had to go to the mall to buy a SIM card and stuff for my phone yeah. um, and buy some clothes and stuff like that from JCPenney because it's super, super cheap. I've heard that name, JCPenney. Yeah, there's JCPenney, yeah. Macy's and a bunch of others, but they're super cheap. So I bought like a bunch of these shirts that I bought. These were like, they were $10 each and buy a second shirt for a penny for like one cent. Okay. So I bought like four shirts. So I was like, cool, That's sweet. Cool. Um, so I bought some shirts. And then while I was at the mall, I stopped in uh, GameStop Mm-hmm. First time I've really been into a GameStop store. Uh, it's basically EB Games. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with their lack of video games. It was kind of like it's kind of like EB Games and Zing mixed together. There was a lot of fucking shitty merchandise and T-shirts and toys and that kind of stuff. But it was like stacked wall to wall, like right up to the roof and stuff. It was a heap of crap. So I don't know if you would buy video games from them. I don't know if they're the cheapest like store you can go to or what. I know there's heaps of game stops and stuff, but if you want merchandise, you would go there. I went there for games that had fuck all pre-owned games, which is disappointing. But because Xbox is not region locked, I could buy Xbox One games over there cheaper than they were mm-hmm. here. So I picked up, which I don't have with me. Yes, I do. Oh, I'm gonna tell you about this. Uh-oh. So I got Grand Theft Auto 5, brand new, 30 bucks. Okay. And we just saw it at EV Games, it's still 40, 50 dollars or something like that. So, I was pretty happy with that. And now that I've got is Atari Flashbacks Volume 1. Fuck's that, I've never seen that before. Exactly, as far as I know, it hasn't or won't be released in Australia. Best I can tell, there's Volume 1 and they have Volume 2 as well, and it's 20 bucks. Brand new, so it's just got a bunch of Atari games on it and shit, so. I thought, why not, 50 bucks for those two, I'll grab that. Um, I didn't spend too long in GameStop, it was the day that night they were releasing COD was coming out that night. So oh, they okay, were yeah. prepping for COD and stuff and they're having a midnight release party and all that kind of crap and I wasn't interested. So I got out of there, but that was pretty cool. Um, what else did I do? I didn't do too much else in the mall. Um, yeah, so I left there and from there, I took a trip down to Jersey. I went to Jalen and Silent Bob's Secret Stash because it's literally 45 minutes away from where I was. So it's a pretty easy drive, just go for the Why not? Why not? It's only 45 minutes. Went down there, um, took some photos and stuff, had surf tacos next door, which is really good, and then we went into the store. This is my fourth time going to their store, I believe. Yeah. Um, and working there this time was Mike and Getem. Mike, you know from Comic Book Men? Yeah. Mike Zapsy. Um, Getem is one of their regular guests that they have on Tell Them Steve Day podcast, and I'm a big fan of Tom Steve Day, so I was more interested in meeting Getem and stuff because it's the first time I've seen him. Mm-hmm. Here, he actually works there and stuff too. Oh. Um, I went in, there was probably five people maybe there, and then they left in 10 minutes, and I had the whole store to myself for probably an hour, sure. sort of thing. So I just sat there and talked to Mike about comics and met his wife and stuff. Oh, and wow. It was pretty cool, and then I spoke to get him about everything, about Tom and Steve Dave and stuff like that. Um, if you don't know the Secret Stash, it's kind of part Kevin Smith Museum, mm-hmm. part comic store. Um, the Kevin Smith like memorabilia, movie props and all that sort of stuff's down the back and you can buy all the Kevin Smith merchandise, the comics and books and t-shirts and all that kind of crap. But then they're actually a comic book store with back issues and war books and new comics and stuff too, which is really cool. So while I was there, I picked up some comics. It ended up being the only comic book store I could actually go to while I was in New York and I was pretty happy with what I got. I trying to redo my X-Men Volume 1 
um, run again. So I've got issue 90 of X Men. Uh, get to them. One, 181, 184, 206, 182, 149, and 91. Um, they, one of those was $10. The rest were like four bucks each. In Australia, they're like ten dollars minimum each. Oh, yeah. So that's a lot cheaper than over here. I was pretty happy with that. And then just because it was cheaper, I picked up Marvel Secret Wars issue eight, which is the first Spider-Man Black Suit episode issue. Yeah, nice. Thirty bucks. That's like a hundred dollar book here in Australia. Shit. So I was pretty happy to grab that. Yeah, I bought Deadpool issue one of his first ongoing series. So he was obviously an X-Force and that kind of stuff, and when he finally got his. First series, this was it, 10 bucks. That's, I think that made me a hundred dollar book here because people fucking love Deadpool for whatever reason. And this one I was really excited it's, for, uh, issue 10 of Deadpool volume one, mm -hmm. featuring the Great Lakes Avengers. Yeah. So, um, this is actually a pretty hard book to find because Deadpool when his first series wasn't as popular as now. So he did like 50 issues before it got canceled, but the lower ones, they weren't selling that well. Um, and the fact that it's Great Lakes Avengers is a pretty funny sort of story. It's where you really start to become the Deadpool that we know. Um, five bucks. Wow. Here it's like a $10 book. So I was pretty happy to get that. Uh, that's all the comics I bought from them. Um, and while I was there, I had to buy, had to buy something Kevin Smith related. Um, most of the stuff I've already bought. Normally I go in and I get Walt to do a sketch for me. If you buy a bat, one of these Batman books, Cacophony or Why Did He Die, he'll do a sketch. On the inside cover. Did I get you one? Yeah, you got me one. Yeah, I got you one last time I was there. So you already got one. But Walt wasn't there. Um, it was just Mike. So I thought I'd pick up something else. And I picked up this, which is the Yoga Hoses soundtrack on oh, vinyl. Oh, oh fucking hell. Signed, awesome. signed by Kevin Smith down the bottom, which doesn't matter because everything in the store is signed by Kevin Smith. You can buy a lot of stuff. It's the soundtrack. It's actually only got four songs on it. Okay. You've seen the movie. You probably yeah. recognize those songs. It's when the Colleen's basically singing stuff. Yeah. Pretty cool. Came on this really cool pink vinyl though. That's cool. So I was pretty happy with that. I thought um, I probably won't be able to buy the Yoga Hose movie anytime soon. Um, I've got to get something Yoga Hose yeah. So I grabbed this. I thought that's pretty cool. That'll look good on the shelf. Um, and the other thing I picked up was a t shirt, um, the Berserker t shirt, which is pretty cool. I got to meet Gellum, which is really cool with photos and stuff with him. Um, and he had spoken mic and stuff. So yeah, if you're in New York, um, if you don't hire a car, you can catch the train from like Central Station down to Red Bank and it's like an hour, I think, hour and a half. Um, but if you hire a car, it's like 45 minutes from Staten Island. So, strongly recommend you go to the Secret Stash if you're over there. Um, so I did that. The other thing I did, oh, I'll talk about these. Because I was going to America, um, I was originally going over there to live, but that didn't happen. Um, I pre-ordered two things and they were waiting for me in the US when I got there. I had friends hold on to them for me. And one of them is this. This is the Vans mm -hmm. Nintendo box. The, the box, box is fucking mate. Mine's a little bit beat up, um, just from storage. But yeah, the box is basically an NES. And inside is the Vans shoes themselves. They, they released three or four different types. And I got these ones. I'm fucking pretty happy. I will probably never wear them. And I want to keep the box too, but the box is already going to start to break. But I should happen. So I had that waiting for me. And the other thing I had waiting for me was this book, which is the Ultimate Nintendo Guide, Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the NES Library, 1985 to 1995. It's uh -huh. a big fuck off heavy book um, by Pat Contry, who is better known as Pat the NES Punk on YouTube and does the CD podcast. He did this as a Kickstarter. Um, it wasn't about um, raising money; it was just about pre-orders mainly. It was always going to get funded. Just, and just like that. secure. Yeah, secure your first book. book. It was. Forty dollars US um, to get shipped to Australia was going to cost sixty. Fuck. So you're paying more than the actual book itself because it's so fucking heavy. Yeah. <coughs> so instead of doing that, I got it shipped to a friend and just had them hold on to it for me. Um, it basically is a review book of every single NES game ever released um, by Pat and Ian and a few other people. There's a few little things like ads. There's a few articles and stuff in there about the Nintendo. Everything else. Really cool coffee table book. Heavy as fuck. Um, I'm pretty happy that I didn't have to pay postage to get that back. So I got that. Um, oh, it wasn't more. I also went to my favourite store in the US, Hot Topic. 
Mm. Oh, I fucking hate that store. It's a hot topic. If you don't know what a hot topic is, lucky you. It used to be a music store that tried to say it was this punky sort of garage mm. indie yeah. store, but really it was this over commercialized crap. They sell band t shirts, they sell they do sell records, but mostly merchandise and crap. Then say five years ago, they realized there's money in pop culture. Mm. So they switched to pop culture things. They're really big on pop vinyls, really, really big on pop yeah. vinyls, and then there's merchandise, t shirts, toys, Doctor Who, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, all that sort of crap. Harley Quinn. Walk in the front door. I can imagine. Big Harley Quinn, Deadpool. Yeah, it was, wasn't as much Deadpool, but you walk in, massive Harley Quinn like stand set up with t-shirts and props and all that kind of crap. Disgraceful, but whatever. And I went in there and I said, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not going to buy anything. Walk down the back to their big wall of pop vinyls. Maybe I'll just buy one pop vinyl. Maybe. Maybe. Because they had stick in Hot Topic ones yeah. that exclusive to Hot Topic. I walked out with six pop vinyls. <laughs> um, I was down the back, I saw this one, which is the Batman 2 pack one of Bullseye Batman and Zebra Batman. Um, if you don't know who they are, Zebra Batman appeared in like a 1960s issue of Detective. I can't remember what issue number or even why he was in the Zebra Man costume. It was like one issue. Um, and then Bullseye Batman was also in another Detective comic. I think it was from the 60s, the famous issue where Batman was in the rainbow. Colored suit, uh, bat suits, he had a different rainbow color and he wore a rainbow suit and Bullseye was in that same issue. So two really obscure bat suits that Funko have made into toys. That's cool, I like that like even though Funko is like a really popular um, somewhat like super mainstream company, I like that they do like obscure shit. Yeah, I think people have been wanting a Zebra Batman toy for a long time mm -hmm. and haven't made it so Funko obviously so there's a market for it. They do that like fucking anything that doesn't have a toy like here. Yeah. yeah, I'll give you a toy. And, and, that, and that's cool, because yeah. you'll never see that as a toy anywhere yeah. else. You just get it as that, so that's okay. Um, we also picked up the Hot Topic exclusive of Bloody Cassidy from the Preacher TV show, which I really fucking, I love the Preacher TV show. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever buy a Preacher toy, so I thought I'll grab this one. Why not? Um, put that down so you can see my beautiful face. Uh, this one is the 2016 New York Comic Con Batgirl exclusive one, uh, sticker than shit on the front. I don't know if it's rare, I don't know if it's worth anything more. Best thing about these is, these were just on the shelf at Hot Topic and were regular price. Yeah. So even though they're stickered, this still only cost me 15 bucks. Yeah. Um, I can maybe sell it for more here, I have no idea. But I bought two of them because I gave one to Toby. He's a big Batgirl fan, he can have that. Um, then while I was looking at the hot, while I was looking at the pop vinyls down the back, this guy who was my age came down the back He's like, oh, have they got any good pop vinyls? I'm like, yeah, I guess. I don't really know. Like, I don't know or care about pop vinyls. Um, he's looking through and he's like, no, nah, got nothing here I want. I'm like, oh, okay, sorry, dude, whatever. I went up to the counter, and behind the counter they had these Kamikaze exclusive ones, which only arrived in the store the day before, because Kamikaze was on the last weekend, I think it was. Um, and they had just a small handful of these pops. And I saw them, I said to the lady behind the counter, I said, what, what are those? Are they available? She's like, yeah, you can buy them. I'm like, sweet, I'll take two. So I grabbed this one, which is the She-Hulk Glow in the Dark one, special, whatever, kamikaze. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was a metallic Colossus with the same sticker and stuff on it. I gave that to Sean because he's a big Colossus fan. Um, and when I grabbed them, she only grabbed the two that were on the shelf. And the guy who I was talking to um, was behind me and he must have been looking for those pop vinyls. He got real mad real quick oh, because he thought I got the only two. And um, he obviously realised I'm not a fan of pop vinyls. He was pretty pissed off that I picked them. Yeah. And he's like, oh man, that's, that's the other ones on here I was looking for. I'm like, oh, sorry dude, I really like these characters. Like She-Hulk and Colossus, I want. He's like, okay. And then he looked at me and he said, you got any more of them? And the lady's like, yeah, yeah, we've got a whole bunch under the counter. He's like, oh, thank God, I can buy some. I'm like, dude, they're just fucking pop vinyls. You almost had a ball with this guy on Hot Topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, I couldn't believe this guy. He was, he was clearly annoyed at me. And I guess hot topic for not having enough stock or whatever. Yeah. But who cares? They're just fucking pop. There's vinyls. something like hot topic. You'd be easily uh, easily can go to the website. And yeah, I'm sure you probably could. And this is hot topic. There's one in every mall. Yeah. I was in the Staten Island one. There's probably 20 others around the New York area. It's, it's not to. like it's a local mum and grub shop. Where yeah. They only have like just what's there. It's not like, like not like Conquest Comics down in Jersey who have Conquest Comics exclusive ones. Yeah. You can only get them in that store. Yeah, this is hot topic, who cares? So. They're, they're fucking everywhere. Yeah, but whatever, so I've got a bunch of them. Um, you got one, show yours, where's yours? Ooh, I gave him a present. 
Ron Weasley. Because why the fuck not? Yeah. <laughs> Might as well. Yeah, and it's Hot Topic exclusive. You, you could probably get that normal without the sticky here. I have no idea. Oh, uh, um, I think the variant here is the sweat, the sweatshirt. Oh, uh, wh why this is... Oh, because he's wearing a sweatshirt. Because he's wearing a sweatshirt, not is it? the school okay. uniform, I think. Not the school uniform. I know Harry Potter's a fucking nerd, but... <laughs> yeah. no, you cosplay like from Weasley. <laughs> I do it for the meme, but... No, I, I like the Harry Potter movies, yeah. I guess. I don't read the books, these books for nerds, but... I'm really happy with this cheese. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> um, the other thing I did, I was in Staten Island, so I googled um, retro video game stores. There's a chain over there called Game Champ, I think they're called. Okay. They, they claim they're a retro video game store. When you go in there, the first half, it's a really small store, the first half of the store is all PS4, Xbox One, the normal sort of stuff. A bit of merchandise then tucked away down the back corner is their retro stuff. Mm -hmm. They had a pretty decent selection of NES games, Genesis games, nothing like out of the order, it's just yeah. Nintendo and Sega sort of stuff. Um, so I went looking through all that kind of stuff and I just bought a small handful of games. Their customer service wasn't the greatest, so I didn't want to spend too much money there. Yeah. But I got a Sega Genesis cleaning system. Um, I don't know how that works. I presume you just add rubbing alcohol onto it and cleans your carts, cleans your pins or something. Okay. I don't know, but I thought it looks cool. I've never seen one, I'll grab that. And it was like five bucks. So, cool. I also bought Bernstein Bears for the Genesis slash Mega Drive. Um, you, you know who the Bernstein Bears are? The cartoon? Yeah, it's funny because it's Berenstain. Yeah. And like, Berenstein. there's a whole like... What are they? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. theory behind it. Yeah. Um, this one's special because it's a Sega Club game. Yeah. So you had to be a member of the Sega Club. So oh, yeah. like Nintendo had Nintendo Power Club and stuff like that. Um, I think it was like 6 or $7. Complete in box. Because they're originally like from books, aren't they? Because I remember like, yeah. reading the books. And they became the cartoon and yeah. stuff as well. That's cool. Um, I bought... NHL 94, which I've got as card only, but I wanted a box because this is, apart from NBA Jam, this is the only sports game ever worth owning, mm -hmm. NHL 94. So I think that was like four dollars. And for a box Genesis game, like this year would be 10, 15 bucks still in Australia. Yeah. That would be like 50, 60. Um, so I grabbed them. Um, and that was the only thing I bought from that shop uh, and I left. Later that day, I took a trip into Manhattan, into the city, um, and I went to Video Games New York, which I think is probably America's biggest retro video game store, if not at least the best known sort of one. Um, it's in the East Village, it's pretty easy to find. Went inside, uh, it's actually a smaller store than I thought. They've got glass cabinets and stuff everywhere, just stacked full of games and consoles and all sorts of random stuff. Um, but if there's two people in the, in the, in like the hallway, you're basically bumping into each other, there's not much room for people to go in there. But if you can get a walk around and stuff, it's kind of part museum, part store. It's definitely a retail store, but they have little signs telling you what things are, like the old Ataris. They had old Atari computers, the Vectrex, um, random consoles and stuff. Uh, I went in there because I had three HES, NES, Nintendo cartridge games, the Australian NES games, that I bought here, three games for 10 bucks. Um, I went over there and I got told, if you're going to take stuff over, take these HES games, they're worth more to Americans than they are for us. So I took them in and I said, do you take these? The guy behind the counter was like, nah, not really. The manager was there. He was like, fuck yeah, we do. We definitely <laughs> take them. I'm like, okay, cool. So he comes running over and says, do they work? I said, yeah, they work. You can test them. He tests them, put in his Retron 5 that they had set up on the counter. He was like, yep, I'll give you $47 cash or $50 store credit. I want the store credit because I'm buying stuff from here. He's like, yeah. sweet. So games that I bought for ten dollars here were fifty dollars over there. Oh, no, nice. fuck, it's sweet. This is the best thing ever. Um, so yeah, he took those games. I wandered around. I really, really wanted a Virtual Boy. I wanted to buy a Virtual Boy. They had one in store and it was yeah. broken, and he didn't want to sell it because it was broken. I'm like, dude, I'll probably never play it. Just let me sit it on my stand. That's all I want. He's like, no, no, I can't sell it. So right out. I'll have a look what else you got. Um, he had a Panasonic 3DO, which I've always wanted, even though it's crappy. Um, that whole bunch of other standard Atari things, um, Panamaxes, um, televisions, all sorts of old cool stuff. And he also had a TurboGrafx-16, which I really, really wanted as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the other guys who worked there is really big into TurboGrafx, so he was telling me the good games, what's best on the TurboGrafx, compare that to the, um, the other console, the Japan console which was the same console, um, I can't remember what it's called, but I did compare them. I'm like, I really wanted it, it was like $200. Um, thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, and I'm like, oh, I can't really justify 
two hundred dollars. Even though I was getting fifty dollars store credit, by the time I bought a couple of games were like forty, fifty dollars each. Yeah. By the time I bought games and shit, it would have cost me far too much. So I looked around a bit further, and I ended up coming back with a Famicom. Fuck you, Famicom. The original Nintendo Entertainment System that was released in Japan. Um, it's basically the Japan NES. Um, they had three of them there for sale. Uh, this one's a little bit yellow, especially off the back. Yeah. Um, they had a white one, a really, really, really nice white one, but it was missing the plastic bit on the slider. Um, and he wouldn't take the slider off one to put it on the other one. And they're all the same price. And I said, well, I really want the white one. He wouldn't do it, so I said, bugger it, I'll grab the least yellow one. Um, Controls are a little bit scratched up, but who cares? It's a Famicom. Grab that, and we don't see many of those here, do we? No, because you, because they're Japanese, you need a step-down converter yeah. to play them and stuff. They're a bit of a hassle, really, to play, and they're not AV, they're RF only. So uh, they're a bit of a fucker, yeah. really, to set up and stuff, unless you get them modded. Um, still one of the guys, I said, oh, we're definitely going to get this, and that's Super Mario Bros. 3, the second greatest video game ever made. So I thought I'll get that. That's cool. And I said, I said, can you suggest something else? And they gave me um, Dragon Spirit, which I think is a sort of RPG game. They said it's in Japanese, but not some of it's in English as well. Uh, so it's kind of playable. And they said it's a really underrated sort of game. So I grabbed that, and they were ten dollars each, I think. So Famicom and two games for I think it was one hundred and twenty bucks, yeah. and I got fifty dollars credit. So it was like seventy bucks all up. Nice. Pretty happy with that. Um, that one I got. From the same store, um, they had a whole bunch of Tiger handheld games, which are just the ones I'm about to show you. Um, they had an NBA Jam one, which I would have bought, but I've got one sitting over there already, so I didn't need to buy it. So I grabbed Batman the Animated Series. That was yeah. cool. Which thankfully doesn't feature Harley Quinn on the front, <laughs> it's only got the Joker and stuff. That came in the day before, um, so they said they're pretty lucky that they still have in stock because it's pretty popular. So I got that for like 10 bucks as well. So, yeah. So that's what I got from Video Games New York. If you're in New York, go check them out. Lots and lots of really cool and really obscure sort of things in there. Um, pretty cool to spend a couple of hours just wandering around and doing shit. Well, um, that's about it for America. Yeah, cool. So that's America. That's all the shit I bought. Nice.